Um, Debbie wanted to know that I had to call an ambulance that she's that bad. So. Okay. All right. All right. Let's just stop real quick and pray for Cindy. Bow with me. Heavenly Father, come to you this morning. Uh, God, don't know all the circumstances, but know that you are the great physician. God, we just lift Cindy up to you today. Uh, God, then uh, that you touch her back. Uh, God, as they uh, transport her, that uh, the those, uh, the paramedics, the doctors, nurses, uh, Father Lord, that, uh, that we'll take care of her. Uh, God, that you'll give them uh, insight and knowledge, compassion. Uh, God, most of all, that you'll touch her body. And God, that you'll drive out this pain that she's dealing with and the hurt. Uh, God, just uh, heal her and uh, get her back on her feet. And uh, God, that uh, she'd be um, healthy and uh, able to give you the glory. For it's in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Tom. All right, if you will open your Bible with me this morning in the book of Psalms. The 133rd Psalm. As you find that, um, I couldn't help but think this morning, I remember one occasion several years ago now, probably 15 or so back, that um, we were on vacation and um, went to a little church there in Cherry Grove and got there and they uh, informed us that uh, they didn't know what they was going to do for a preacher. Their preacher had resigned and their interim had um, been cleaning his, doing something and fell in his driveway and busted his head open and was in the hospital. And my dear sweet stepfather said, well, he can preach for you. Uh, and so thankfully they, the guy showed up, they'd called. Uh, and so... Um, I'm on vacation. I'm glad to be with y'all here in Concord. So uh, I said, um, but, um, and uh, we're supposed to be gone, but here I is. And I had to, can't told the guy, I said, never mind that I had lined up. I'll do it. And uh, God just kind of laid something on my heart anyway. Uh, this is um, a reworking of a, of a message I preached a good many years back. Um, but um, so it's not a new message, but a couple of those songs y'all sang were almost a hundred years old. So um, if that's uh, if y'all can do it, I can too. And, uh, but um, I probably I'd have to stop and think for a moment to even tell you what my title, uh, what the sermon title I, I used last week was. Um, but um, for some reason uh, this week and the events and things that have went on, uh, the title of this message just uh, came to my mind and I, uh, I couldn't uh, escape it, couldn't get away from it and uh, went and dug out uh, my notes and uh, I said, looked at them and reworked them a little bit to I think fit uh, what, uh, what I see happening. Uh, and uh, in this uh, 133rd Psalm, uh, the psalmist writes those familiar words, Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. This week I probably have heard um, more, I, I, I would be afraid to guess just how many times I've heard uh, the statement, our nation is divided. Our nation is divided. I, I've heard that uh, just repeatedly, even more than just this week. It's been going on, uh, and the newscasters have been talking about it, and, uh, and, and I think they're rather enjoying it, to be honest with you, because it gives them something to report, um, and I'm not so sure but what they're not actually stirring up the division. Uh, but um, our nation is divided. I, I think that uh, is apparent. Our homes are divided. Our churches are divided. Uh, and everywhere we look, uh, there's just very, very few things you can point at where there's not division. The workplace is divided. Marriages are divided. Uh, parents and children are divided. It is, uh, division seems to be the, uh, the, the motto, uh, the uh, tag that is hanging over uh, not just America, but the world in general. We have, uh, as you turn on the world news, you see uh, across uh, the world, you see division. You see it in, uh, with Russia and the Ukraine. You see it in the Middle East. Everywhere we look, uh, we see division. We see uh, division in the United Kingdom. We see the whole uh, Brexit movement with the uh, European Union. We, we see uh, just everywhere we turn, there, there's division. Uh, and yet God still says in His Word uh, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together 
in unity. Now, when the psalmist wrote these words, uh, the image that would have come to their mind would have been their, uh, the custom of the time, the tradition uh, of their time that, uh, to, to work together um, in, a, in a community. That was uh, kind of the, uh, the hallmark, if you will, of, of their culture, uh, of the people of that time, that they would uh, live in communities. And um, if Dale had a good year uh, growing tomatoes and I had a good year growing corn, then Dale would get some of my corn and I would get some of his tomatoes. And if Martin's garden died completely, we'd both give him uh, some corn and tomatoes. And uh, that was just the way that uh, they worked. We, we saw that uh, when we were in China uh, in some of the older neighborhoods. It was obvious. Uh, in fact, we got to, to actually go and, and to visit with a family and kind of uh, see how, how it worked. Uh, they, uh, you could tell that it started out as, uh, as one house. And over time, as the family grew, they just kept adding to it. And eventually it made one great big square uh, with a kind of a common area uh, in the middle. And, and again, uh, you know, the, the younger in the group took care of the older in the group. And, uh, you know, if, if this group did well, then the whole group did well. And, you know, if one suffered, they, they helped the one that suffered. But uh, they worked together. And that would have been the imagery. Uh, that the psalmist, uh, as he spoke, would have, uh, as he wrote these words, would have been thinking of. But uh, in, in the Psalms, it takes on a, uh, an even greater idea of the idea of, of unity uh, of the brotherhood of God. Those that, uh, that, that serve God, uh, how good and pleasant it is for them to work together, to dwell in, in unity. But as, as I look at it, uh, I think we can take it even further than that and just simply say, uh, God likes unity unity. Uh, God likes unity and there's power uh, in, in unity. And I, I, I look and uh, I am firmly convinced that uh, many of, the, uh, of our uh, enemies, many other nations are, uh, are, are watching how we are, are acting uh, in, in this last week, how we're going to act in, in the months ahead. And um, I, I know for a fact that in China, uh, their news service reported uh, on the events taking place in America and said that these are the signs of an ill democracy. The signs of an ill democracy. Our enemies are, uh, are watching and, and saying that we're sick. Uh, that our nation is dying, that our nation is hurting uh, as they look and see the division and the animosity uh, that is uh, flowing out uh, on our streets. And as we come together this uh, Veterans Day weekend, um, you know, we, uh, we, we have the opportunity to live in a nation that, uh, that uh, men like Dale and Tim and Earl and Wallace and many others uh, have fought and served and, uh, and provided us our freedom, but that doesn't mean we're free to act crazy. Easy, folks. Uh, that's, that's not the freedom that, uh, that they're talking about. And so uh, as we look this morning I'm, uh, and, and think about this idea of, uh, of unity, uh, and when we look, it, it's affecting, our, our, again, our marriages, our homes, our, our churches. Everywhere we look, we see division. So this morning, I, I want us to take this passage and, uh, and, and take it apart for a moment and, uh, and look at it and see what he, what he talks about in, in, in just this, uh, in, in this simple psalm uh, when he says how good and pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. I'm reminded uh, of many years ago, um, I, you, know, you might can tell something about the preacher by where he gets his illustrations. I'm reminded of an old Peanuts uh, cartoon where uh, one day old Linus, you remember Linus, Linus was the one who always sat around with the blanket and, and he was watching television and Lucy comes in and uh, you remember Lucy, right? Lucy was... Um, I don't even know the right adjective to describe Lucy, but Lucy was bad. She was a bad, bad woman. And, you know, she kind of run things in Charlie Brown's world. And Lucy walks in and changes the channel. And Linus says, what gives you the right to change the channel? And Lucy, and Lucy says, these five fingers right here. And Linus is confused. He says, what do you mean? He says, she looked at him and says, these five fingers. says, by their sales, they're not much. But when they come together... They're a force to be reckoned with. He says, okay. 
Yeah, uh, yeah that, that's one of the things we need to be reminded of, that, uh, that, that apart, we, we have very little power. We have very little, uh, very little what we accomplish. But this nation has been built. Uh, go back and whether you're talking about the revolution or throughout our time uh, as a nation has been built um, on unity. Uh, our homes, if they're going to be strong, they, they will be built on unity. Our churches on unity. And, and yet, we uh, again, we look around and, uh, and there, there's division over practically uh, everything. Look again at, at, at the elections. We look at the, the protesting in the street. We look at the divorce rate. We look at uh, the, the, the problems in, in the homes between parents and children. We look at uh, problems in the workplace. That, that division, again, is the mantra of our time. And yet, God still, from beginning to end, talks about unity. Uh, whether it's in the New Testament, the Old Testament, and what should really get our attention is not only uh, how much God promotes unity, but how much Satan provo- promotes division. Beginning in the Garden of Eden, Satan has promoted division. Whether it was with, uh, with Adam and Eve, whether it was with Adam and Eve and God, whether it was with uh, with. Um, uh, the the people at uh, Babel, whether it was uh, Moses and the and the and the Israelites arguing, uh, regardless, it, there's always been division. And as much as God loves unity, Satan loves and works to bring about division. So this morning, I, I want us to take and uh, and since this is an Old Testament passage written in Hebrew, I'm going to read it right to left, like they did in, in Hebrew, because I, I think we need to start uh, with the goal in mind when he talks about here uh, dwell, dwelling together in unity. When he, when he gives us that objective, when he gives us uh, that goal and says this is what I'm looking for it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. The problem I see with that is that for the most part we don't know what unity is. We, we really don't. We, we don't see it enough uh, to know what, uh, what unity is. Unity is one of those things uh, where if you talk about unity, uh, most people say, yeah, I've heard of it, but I just don't know much about it. You know, uh, and, and that's what unity is. Again, whether you're talking about the home, whether you're talking about the church, whether you're talking about the factory, there's just not a, a, a great deal of, of unity. In the factory, it's management and in the employees fighting. Uh, in, in, in politics, it's the Republican and the Democrats fighting in, in the home. It's the wife and the husband, the parents and the children. Everywhere we look, uh, we see division. And, and yet we, we're called on to have unity. And, and so as we start this, well, I want to talk about for a moment just a, a, a definition of, Uh, of unity. Exactly what is it that God says is so beautiful? Uh, What what exactly is he talking about when he says, I I love unity? Well, what exactly does he mean? Well, uh, let me go at it. uh, Again, I'm reading from right to left, so let me go at this from the backside. Instead of telling you what unity is, let's tackle it from from what it's not. Because I I believe what most people think of when they think of uh, of unity is is they have in their mind the idea of, instead of unity, the idea of uniformity. Let's all think alike. Let's all get in line. Uh, To me, when I think of uniformity, uh, I think my mind goes back, as we're here Veterans Day weekend, my mind goes back to those old black and white newsreels uh, of the Nazi soldiers goose-stepping down the street and uh, as they passed Hitler, they, you know, all in in uniformity, uh, you know, marching together, saluting together, you know, turning their, you know, the the whole, that's uniformity. You know, I don't think that was ever God's design. I, I look around, at, at, at this room this morning and, and I don't think God's too crazy about uniformity. I look at nature and, and, and God created zebras and, and, and giraffes and rhinoceroses and elephants and, and, and all those things and, and, and God, you know, redheads and blondes and brunettes and gray and nothing and, and, and God created all of those things, red and yellow, black and white. I don't think God is looking for, for, for uniformity uh, and, and, and yet that seems to be what we mean by unity many times. I think that's what we're seeing play out in, in, uh, in our streets this week. It, it is what some people mean by the idea of let's be united. It means let's be united and all think what I think. That, that, that's what unity is for most people. 
You know, let, let's do it. You know, Mark, let's you and I have unity. Let's do it my way. You know, now that's the way, that's what most people think of when, when they, that's not unity, folks. That's uniformity. That, that, that's not unity at all. That, that, that's uniformity. Unity is, is again, is, is totally different than that. I, I heard the president uh, on Friday making his uh, address at, at Arlington for Veterans Day. And he said something that has really resonated in my mind in connection to this idea of unity. He was talking about our armed services, uh, you know, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard. And he was talking about how, and I don't remember his exact words, but he said they are the portrait, they are the model of unity. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, Five different branches of the service, five different sets of leaders, but you tell them to go and tackle the Germans. And they went. Regardless of whether they were from the east or the west, or the north or the south, whether they were black or white, whether they were rich or poor, they got their, they got their draft notices and they went to serve. When you told them there's a skirmish in Korea, in Vietnam, whether they were for it or not, most of them put on their uniform, took up their weapon, and went and fought. Regardless of who they were, where they were from, who, what color their skin was, they went and they fought. They weren't uniform, but they were united. And then I give you another current example that struck me this morning as this group was singing Happy Birthday to Wallace. Folks, there wasn't a lot of uniformity there. I just got to be honest with you. I don't know what key that, keys, plural, that was in. About all of them, best I could tell. I'm pretty sure there was a couple of you down in the key of M. You know, it, it, it was pretty rough. Yeah, a couple of you were singing in three keys, B, A, and D. <laughs> I noticed that some of you were singing, Happy Birthday, How Old Are You? And some of you sang, Happy Birthday, God Bless You. And some of you didn't even know the words. I don't, you, you're singing, Mary Had a Little Lamb. You don't know. Wasn't a lot of uniformity in that. It was kind of all over the place. Now, I don't mean that ugly. I'm making a point here. There just wasn't a lot of uniformity. It was kind of spontaneous. But you know what was unity? The feeling, the love that was behind it. You wasn't all singing the same words. You wasn't all in the same key. But there was unity. See, I'm afraid that what we've tried to, what's destroying our homes many times, what's destroying our relationship with our children is this goal for uniformity. You know, I, I can tell you from, from my own experience as a parent and as a child, and some of you now who your children are a little older, you're going to have to, you, you know what I'm about to say is true, you just may not admit it. The problem most of us had in our home with our children is we wanted uniformity, not unity. And by that I mean, you know how your parents hated your hairdo? and your music, and your clothes, and now you hated your children's hairdo, and their clothes, and their music? Well, let me give you a little comfort. They're going to hate their children's music, clothes, and hair too, and you can sit back and laugh. See, what causes much of the division in our homes is we want uniformity, not unity. I, you know, I, I will promise you this, gentlemen, if you try to aim for uniformity in your marriage, you, gonna, you, you might as well get you a hammock on the porch, boys, because it's not happening. See, we, we had this conversation. We didn't really have a conversation. Just an observation was made yesterday. My wife and my girls, they like the dumbest things ever put on television. It's like they go through the, 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 the guide and say, this looks dumb, let's watch it. You know? They like all them dumb real estate shows where people go in, tear up, bulldoze, remodel. I hate them. I hate them. They're just dumb. You know, they're just the craziest things in the world to me. 
And I, I, I made the statement, they were watching, I know the name of it, Love It or List It. How about Lose It? You know, they, you, know you got one, Tim? You know, and I walked through and I made the comment, this is the dumbest show ever. And Caleb says, you think all their shows are stupid? I said, pretty much. But you know what I do? I go into another room and watch what I want to because uniformity is not happening. They like, you know, listen. Now, this afternoon, I'm going to sit down and watch somebody throw a football to somebody. I don't even know who. I don't have a clue who's playing today. Don't care. I'm like Jerry. Jerry Clower said one time, said, I just like to see them strop on them helmets and hit one another. I don't care what color their outfits are. They can hit the people on their own team for all I care. You know, as long as it don't hit me. You know, and I can tell you right now, I'm going to be sitting there watching the football game, and if I'm awake to hear it, Rhonda's going to walk through and go, that's the stupidest game ever. I don't see how they get all them home runs, you know. <laughs> We're not going to be uniform, but we do have to have unity. We have to have love for each other and love for our Savior. In this country, folks, there's not going to be uniformity. We're not all going to walk alike, think alike, look alike, talk alike. We're not all going to have the same ideas. But we're going to have to be united because I'm going to tell you, our enemies are watching. Our enemies are watching. When the Chinese newspaper prints, this is an ill democracy, our enemies are watching. I will promise you, if your parents, you know your children watch. And they look for the slightest sign of disunity between mama and daddy. You let them think there's the least bit of crack where they can slip in and, and, and get away with something. They will just take a hammer and a wedge and beat it in there and make it worse. Not uniformity, unity. Listen, as a church, we, you know, we, we'll never all think alike. We'll, listen, there, there are people sitting in this church today. There are some of you who this week voted Democrat, some of you who voted Republican, some of you who voted Libertarian, might even be some, might, probably some of you just didn't even vote because you looked at it and went, why bother? But when the voting was done, come Wednesday, we're still all American. Even in our pledge on two different occasions, we say something like this. One nation under God. Indivisible. Folks, I'm going to go off on a little bit of a political rant soapbox here. It's one thing if you want to protest and make you a sign and march around. I'll, I'll get you some markers and we got a whole pile of paper. I'll let you even have the paper. But it's a whole other thing when you start throwing rocks through innocent store shops' windows. It's a whole other thing when you start burning police cars. You've went from protesting to being stupid, and your mama needs to come get you and beat your tail and take you home. Unity is different than uniformity. You may not like who won. You may not like who wins next time either. You may not like some of the decisions they make. But we're all Americans, and we better act like it. But we will be speaking German or Japanese or Russian or something. And I'm too old to learn a new language. Listen, same thing in our churches. We're not all going to agree. Again, some of you voted all kinds of ways. Some of you didn't vote. That's all right. Some of you have a totally different idea about, about a passage of Scripture than I do. That's all right. One of the best friends I've got in this world. He and I disagree on pretty much everything about the book of Revelation except the fact that it is the last book in the Bible. Other than that, we don't agree on hardly anything. I tell him all the time, he's one who believes that the church is going to go through the tribulation. I believe we're going to be raptured. I tell him, you go ahead and stay, buddy. I'm out of here. I'll see you when you get there. And yet we still love each other. We still can work together. Because we believe this much. We believe whenever we go, the only way you're going is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Whether that's before, middle of, after, wherever you believe it. We believe in the virgin birth. We believe in the, in, in, in the uh, authority of the word of God. We believe again in salvation by grace and, him, and Jesus Christ alone. We believe in the basics. We're not uniform. 
We're in unity. We don't have to, listen, there are some deal breakers. There, there, there are some things that I've told you before. There's some things we're fighting for. There's some things we're dying for. There's some that are neither. The important thing in life is to know the difference. Listen, when it comes to the virgin birth, when it comes to salvation by, by the blood of Jesus Christ and Him alone, there, there, there are some things that are deal breakers. But I'm not going to argue with you and fight with you over which version of the Bible you read. That there, are some, that there are some preferences when it comes to worship and worship style. That there are some churches this morning who are meeting and they're playing their pipe organ and they're, they're in their robes and they're bumping their fingers together and they're all big time high church, highfalutin. And there's probably a few that, that they're, they're preachers in flip flops and shorts. And you know what? I really could care less. I might wear shorts one day. Y'all be all distracted by them legs. I tell you that right now. And, and I know you'd be distracted if I tried to wear flip flops because I can't walk in them things. I'd break my neck up here. I don't care if you preach in a robe or a bucket as long as you preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified. We don't have to be uniform. We do have to have unity. There's a difference. There's a difference. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. Folks, if you want to make your home strong, have unity. There are some things in your home that matter. There are some things that don't. I can tell you, my father used to lose his mind because I didn't want to wear a belt. It just ain't that big a deal. Yeah. I've done, listen, I've done some of the same silly things, trying to be uniform. Listen, it drives me crazy to see somebody wear a baseball cap turned around backwards. Ask my boys what I've told them more than once. Turn your hat around or I'm going to turn your head around. It don't matter to me. If you're not the catcher, your hat goes forward. You know, that's just the way it ought to be. You know, I, I just ask you. Know, but, you know, listen, again, that's not that big a deal. As long as my, as long as my boys are good, good husbands, good men, they're sitting here in church every Sunday, one of them's up here playing the guitar. One of them's working in children's church. One of them, he, he taught Sunday school this morning. You know what? It's important we decide what, what is important and what matters. Unity or uniformity. Listen, we'll destroy our homes trying to have uniformity. We'll destroy our nation trying to have uniformity. We'll destroy our church trying to have uniformity. You may not like every song that's sung, but if that song's about Jesus Christ, Hush and endure it. I don't like a lot of them 7-Eleven songs. You know what 7-Eleven songs are, don't you? Seven words 11 times, over and over and over. Can't stand them. Most of them. I like songs. I, I like to know who you're singing about. I like to hear you once in a while in a gospel song say Jesus. I don't know. Consider it a weird quirk of mine. You know, I like for every now and then in a gospel song to hear God mentioned. That's just one of my little weird idiosyncrasies. You know, in a gospel song, I occasionally like to hear about the cross and the blood. Forgive me. Just one of my little ways. But uniformity will kill us. We've got to have unity. There's a definition. Behold how good and how pleasant. Unfortunately, there's a departure. Folks, we have, again, we have come to the point in this nation where, where we, we, are, we are fighting uh, uh, over everything. Unity. You stop and think about it for a moment. When's the last time you saw unity? When's the last time you saw people come together for a common bond? Again, our military is a great example of that. Thank God for those men and women that put aside their differences, that put aside their, their skin color and their religion. Good friend of mine is a chaplain in the, in the army. And he talks about that, how difficult it is to be a chaplain in the army when you're talking about Baptists and Lutherans and Methodists and Jews and, and everything else. And, and, and having to come together and try to be a spiritual guide for all those men of all, and, and women of all those different spiritual backgrounds and heritages and try to do something that, that, that doesn't offend and appeal and, and try to bring them together. And I don't know that they ever get that accomplished. But one thing I get, I know about our military. If you tell them you need to be on a, a, on a transport this evening, you're going to Afghanistan or Iraq, then men and women will be there with their boots on. 
And they'll sit down beside a black man or a red man or a Muslim man or a woman and they'll go do their job. Folks, the church can learn something from those men and women. We may not all look alike. We may not all think alike. But we ought to all be marching under the banner of Jesus Christ. Our nation could learn something from our pledge. One nation under God. Indivisible. Folks, if an election divides us, we're doomed. We need to go ahead and start practicing up on our foreign language. I done tried to learn the metric system once. I don't want the Europeans to come in and shove out. I couldn't learn it when I was young. I sure can't learn it now. I get confused every now and then looking at my speedometer. I don't know why they put it on there either. I just need miles per hour. I don't care how many, whatever them K things are I'm doing. I so messed up when we were in China, all their signs over there. I thought we was doing 180. I didn't know how fast we was going. I didn't know how much gas we was buying. I didn't know how much money I was spending. I don't like that. We need to be united. Not only does it give us the goal of unity, but it gives us a guide, the brethren. Folks, first of all, if the church of Jesus Christ, those who claim Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior can't come together in unity, how in the world can we ever expect our nation to? If the church of Jesus Christ, who says they're all going to go to heaven and spend eternity together, if they can't get along, if they can't cooperate, how in this world can we expect our homes to be in unity? How can we expect our workplaces to be in unity? He tells us that, that it is to be the, the brethren. Unity is something. Listen, you know, again, as Lucy said, individually we're not much, but bring us together as, as Americans. We ought to be able to come together. Listen, you, you may not like who was elected this time, I didn't like who was elected last time, but I got over it. And I may not like the one that was elected this time come February. You know, who knows? You know, I, I don't know. You know, you, you know I, told, I threw those voter guides we had over there. I, I, I took those to the dumpster a while ago. And I start, as I got ready to carry them out, I told Ed, I said, I'm going to save a copy or two of these. And I'm going to pull them out about March and see if they're actually doing what they said they was going to do. I know better, so I just went on and threw them away. Brethren, Americans need to come together and quit this silliness. The church needs to come together. The world is dying and going to hell while we're arguing over what color carpet to buy. The world is dying lost and we're arguing over which version of the Bible to read. We're arguing over which song to sing. We're arguing over how to dress. We're arguing over trivial junk. Stuff that makes no eternal difference. The brethren, he says, they ought to be able to come together in unity. They, they ought to be able to come together. Listen, next Tuesday night, we're going to gather together with Rock Hill AME Zion and Northwest Baptist Church, and we're going to have a Thanksgiving service. We don't do everything alike. The Rock Hill AME Zion, they, they, they're very denominational. They get told by their denomination a lot of, a lot, a lot of their decisions come from headquarters. They, they, they have a lot of things like that that they do. You go over there, you get saved, you can be sprinkled or you can be baptized. Leonard McClung, when he was there, he and I talked about that a long time. And, and, and we came to this conclusion. They didn't care. Uh, we, we decided we didn't care how much water you got as long as you got Jesus. That was what mattered. You go, but you, you know, we planned that service one year and we was going over to Rock Hill AME Zion and we thought, well, we'll sing How Great Thou Art. We got over there, how great thou art. It's not in their hymnal. I didn't know that was legal. Yeah. I thought that was somewhere in the Bible. You had to have how great thou art in your hymnal. You know. But we made it through it. They don't do everything the way we do. Johnny doesn't do everything at Northwest the way we do. We don't do everything the way they do at Rock Hill. But folks, we've got a common enemy. Satan wants to destroy all three churches. And the people in them. Unity. The brethren ought to be able to come together in unity. It, 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 it's a direction. It, it, there's a directive. There's no option in that. 
There's a departure, uh, a demonstration when he says to us here that, that it's supposed to be uh, the brethren. The brethren are, are to come together. They're, they're to be united in, in, in serving him as a nation. We're all Americans, most of us anyway. The enemy is not a Republican or a Democrat. The enemy is some foreign nation. I won't even call which one. Someone that wants to change us. Someone wants to infiltrate us. That's the enemy. The enemy is not our brothers and sisters that voted a different way than us. The enemy, you know, listen, I just read an article this week and, and, and I was reading, and I won't even say which one, just for the, to protect the innocent or the guilty, I don't know, uh, but how one political party it, it, it has started infighting on their self, and the progressive side of the party is fighting with the traditional side of the party. And uh, you know. Listen, the parties can't even get along with their self. But we're brethren, folks. I, I don't know him. I wouldn't, I, I don't know if I'd recognize him if he walked in the door. But I like what our vice president-elect said the night he accepted the nomination. He walked up to the platform and he said, and I might get this wrong, I, I can't remember, I remember the first thing he said. He walked up and he said, I'm a Christian first, a husband and a father second, and a Republican third. Folks, we get things in the right order. We get unity. We get, we, we get unity instead of uniformity. That, that, that oneness of heart that, that God talks about here. You see not only the, the goal and the guide, but look at the glory. I love the statement. How good and how pleasant. How beautiful. How charming. How wonderful is what that statement says. How wonderful it is to see God's people come together. To see the brethren. I, I want to tell you something. I, I believe with all my heart. I, I, I believe this. That God is sitting looking at America in the last few months, few years even. And looking that all that we have been blessed with in the previous 240 years. All that He has done for us. All the miraculous times He has rescued us. All the battles that we have been in that we have that we have won the wars, all the things that this nation has come through. And I believe with all my heart, God is looking at the division in our nation, whether it's political or racial or social, and I believe with all my heart, it breaks His heart. A people that, has been, that have been given so much that are arguing and fighting over somebody that won't be in office but about 1,400 days. That's about how long the president, unless he gets a second term, 1,400 days. And then we can elect another one. And we're fighting over that. Let me tell you something. And I don't know how you voted and don't care. But Obama wasn't as bad as you thought he would be or he wasn't as good as you thought he'd be. Trump won't be as good as you think, think he'll be. He won't be as bad as you think he'll be. And somebody will come in after them and undo and change everything they did or try their best. When it's all said and done, we're still Americans. That these men fought to provide our freedom and our liberty. We're still the church of Jesus Christ that He died on the cross for. We're still family. We need to decide what matters, what's important. Because God says, how beautiful. If I could tell you this morning, there was a verse in the Bible where God said, let me tell you what I love. Let me tell you what you can do, and I'll just love it. How many of you would be interested in that? Okay, good. I did that this morning when I told you to open your Bibles to the 133rd Psalm because he tells you right there, I love it when I see unity. I love it when I see unity. 
when I see people come together in, 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 in common bond. You know, as an only child, I didn't know how to handle some of this stuff, but I, I've watched my kids, and if you've had more than one, you've probably seen this. You know, I, 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 I didn't know how to deal with this as the boys grew up, and they'd argue and fight and fuss. And, and, and as an only child... Man, Archie didn't have nobody to fuss with. We didn't, you know, we, you know, we didn't, have, we didn't have anybody to argue with. You know, we didn't know what, how that worked. You know, but I remember on several occasions. And I don't know if they remember it or not, but on several occasions, I remember telling the boys, "Listen, y'all need to understand something. Y'all are all each other have. One day, mom and daddy's going to be, gone. If, you know, if things go normal. One day, mom and daddy's going to be gone. Grandma and grandpa's going to be gone." And when everybody else is gone, y'all are brothers. If you had more than one child or if your child ever played with other children, you know what it's like to look out in your backyard, especially if they're brothers and sisters, if you've got more than one child, to look out the back door and see your kids out in the backyard fighting over a stupid toy. It's kind of sickening, isn't it? It's kind of heartbreaking. But is there anything any more pleasant than to be in your house, back when kids played in the yard anyway, and to hear your kids out in the yard or maybe in the house somewhere playing nicely together? You know, generally, they only do that when they think you're not watching. When they're, to hear them playing nicely and sharing and cooperating and working together on is there a much sweeter sound in this world than to hear your children? Some of you are smiling. You, you remember that one time it happened. You, know. you, you, you remember that rare occasion when they actually worked together and they played together. And you, you probably stopped and just watched them for a moment and thought, ah, they can play together. Or if you're like me, you stood there and thought, well, I wonder how long this is going to last. I'm just being a pessimist, I guess. You know, I wonder which one's going to whack the other one. I like what, when Pansy was having her surgery, her girl said, they was out in the backyard arguing one day and said, Bill stuck his head out the back window and said, hit her! You know, this, you know <laughs> said, we didn't, we didn't know what to do. So we both crying and nobody hit each other. So we didn't even know how to act. Said, he told us, go ahead and fight. I don't believe anything pleases God anymore than to see our homes in harmony, to see our churches in harmony, to see our nation in harmony. Because he said it, how good, how pleasant, how wonderful it is to see our churches, our, our people. It delights God. It is a genuine delight. However, that provides a dilemma. If it delights God when we're in unity, when there is no unity, there's a dilemma. Think about it for a moment. I hate to ask you to think. I know that bothers you on a weekend, you know. But if it pleases God for us to be in unity, then would you say it, it, it's safe to say it breaks his heart when there is no unity? I couldn't tell you how many times in the last year I've had somebody come to me with a copy of their church bylaws and say, here, read this and answer this. Tell me what we can do. Tell me this, 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 and this. And I'd look at their bylaws and say, you can't do that. Well, how can we do that? You can't do that. <laughs> you know, your, your bylaws say you can't do that. I wish you, you would answer some of my phone calls and some of my emails. And hear the disunity. I stood in a church not too long ago. They were having a barbecue and I went. And I was just walking around speaking to a few people that I knew there. And one of the people at the table didn't really know me. And they said, literally not much further than I am from Archie. He said, you know our pastor? I said, yeah. What do you think of him? Well, I think he's a good guy. Really? You want him? Where do you pastor at? I told them, you want to swap? Like, no, obviously not. With, with geniuses like you here, I think I'll pass. <laughs> you know, literally, T 
10 feet from their pastor, throwing him under the bus, and then wondering why God doesn't bless, because God likes unity. Is he doing everything like I would do? No. But they called him. He's their pastor. Unity. God says how good and how pleasant. And look how even more. Look at this last word, working backwards. Behold. God says, look. Look. Look at it. Gaze at it. Stare at it. You know why I believe God puts such an emphasis on that? Because he knows how rare it is. He knows how seldom you see it. You better look at it quick. It's like going down 73 and going through finger. You better look quick. Behold, he says. Look, gaze, stare, admire, observe. He gives us here, it's a distinction. He's, he's holding it up like, look, man, you, you've never seen anything like this. This is rare. And it's a duty. It's an obligation. Can I give you a negative example of unity? A little over 15 years ago, a group of America's enemies with little to no training pulled off what most of us would have thought on September the 10th to be an impossibility. If I would have asked you on September the 10th, by this time tomorrow, do you think the World Trade Centers will be a pile of rubble? in downtown Manhattan. You would have said, no, don't, don't guess, don't think so. That September the 11th morning, I was sitting in the hospital with Freddie Fireman here. And as those planes hit the building, he looked at them and he said, that fire is going to be hard to fight. But he never once said those buildings are coming down. He never once said they'll collapse. And he admitted this morning he didn't think they would. He never thought that. That thought never crossed his mind. If I would have asked you September the 10th, do you think our enemies will attack our Pentagon? You'd have said, never. No way will they attack the Pentagon, the symbol of America's military, the symbol of America's might. And yet just a few hours later, what had started out as some individuals had come together in their united hate for America and all she stands for and brought us to our knees. Causing our young men and women to have to go into harm's way, to go into the battlefields because of their hatred. Unity in a negative sense. They were united for hate. They hated America and everything she stood for. They, those buildings, those trade centers, that Pentagon, the, the White House that they were aiming for, stood for, it represented everything America is. And they wanted to crush it in hate. They were united in their hate. You know it, I know it. A bunch of relatively untrained, unprepared people who came together in hate. Who took over some airplanes without real weapons, with a handful of just ordinary tools, took over and brought us to our collective knees. Sent America into shock that I'm still not sure we've completely took in. Folks, if a handful of evil Hateful men could do that in hatred through unity. What could the church of Jesus Christ do if we would unite in love? What could our homes look like with unity? What could this nation be if we would unite and quit fighting and quibbling over insignificant stuff? Behold how good, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together 
in unity. This Veterans Day weekend, let me evoke a name that many of you old enough to remember. After the D-Day invasions, after Normandy, they went to General Eisenhower and they said to him, they said, it's marvelous how you were able to bring all those teams together. He interrupted them and stopped them. He said, not teams, team. Team. Folks, as Americans, we're on one team. As a church, we're one team. As a family, you're one team. Not teams, team. Behold how good and pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. I want to ask you to bow your heads this morning. This morning you need to come and you want to pray for our church, for all churches that are preaching and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we would unite together under the banner of Jesus Christ, that our nation would put aside their petty differences over party affiliation, over a lot of insignificant things, and we would come together as Americans. You look back over 240 years of history, this nation is a great force when we unite. Go back and read your World War II history and see what happened when this nation was awoken, when the Japanese attacked, and the factories and the plants converted from making household items into making military items to the men and women of this nation volunteered and were drafted and put on the uniform and went to battle. When this nation is united, the United States of America, that's our name. And if we want to stay America, we'll stay united. If we want to stay the church of Jesus Christ, we'll stay united. If we want our homes to stay together, We'll continue in unity. Not in uniformity, but unity. I want to invite you this morning to come. You want to pray for our church. You want to pray for this nation. You want to pray for our homes. You want to pray for your home. Unity. It's good and pleasant. God desires it. Do we? As we stand together.